framed up nicely. I have, and you're looking very Shall good. Shall but uh, please introduce yourself. Tell, tell us who you are <laughs> and what you do. I'm Roger Coleman. I'm a photographer. And I, in the past, I was very, as the French say, impliqué in, the, in Cambridge Urban Studios. I've done a lot of work with them for Cambridge Urban Studios. Well, you are one of our honorary members and, I am and, an a, past, member. and a past chair. That's right. Yeah, That's right. yeah. we haven't dared fill your shoes. We do it on a rotating basis at the moment. I know. <laughs> I, I gather it's working extremely well. Well, hopefully it is. But back to your work. Yes. So what's the inspiration for your photography? What well, you the landscape, really. Mm -hmm. the, um, I do a lot of photographs of the fens. Mm -hmm. And I started because I had a full-time job in London uh -huh. I trained as a fine artist mm -hmm. so, and doing that you never lose touch with those hand and eye skills and it's yeah. always important to you. Um, and I was drawing the fens in my spare time but it was spare time and I was using a camera as a notebook mm -hmm. um, and gradually the camera and the photographs took over because I found this, you capture a different thing with mm. camera too. If you, if you're drawing or painting, it takes time, and so things are changing in front of you. The atmosphere, the light is changing, mm. and you're trying to distill that into mm. something. Whereas if you're photographing, it's much more to do with the moment. Mm. And what I found was, um, and I crisscrossed the fens. I, I had a map, and I divided the fens up into sectors, and I would crisscross mm. them. So I went down every little lane and track in a radius of about 12 miles of Ely. Wow. And I used, Sally used to crack up because we'd be driving through the fence and she'd say, what sector are you in now, Roger? And I'd say, oh, sector seven, I think. <laughs> but having a method meant that yeah. I actually did cover the whole of the area. And it also meant I had a very good picture in my own head of the place, the way the light moves through it yeah. and so on, which meant not having a lot of time, I could go back and I, I could, I could look at the weather and so on, and I could think, ah, oh, mm. I will go there and photograph. Mm. I should be able to get the photograph that I want of that mm. place. So that was how you could sort of manage the, the moment bit of the photograph. Mm -hmm. And a lot of photography is actually waiting yes. for the moment, but there's no point if you're in the wrong place. You've mm. actually got to get yourself to the right place where you can wait for things to arrange themselves. Yes. So it's very different to drawing and painting where mm -hmm. you have the license to arrange things yourself mm. <laughs> and so on. So that's sort of, yeah, and that's how photography really started to work for me. Although I'd used a camera all my life. Yes. Um, and I'd worked in art and design all my life. Mm. So it was sort of second nature, but actually making it a main subject mm. was a big step for me right. and a change. So what's the fun of doing Cambridge Open Studios then? What's the... I always believed in th things like Cambridge Open Studios because I'm, I'm a great advocate, personally, a supporter of the whole idea of, of democratic art, that art is available to people and importantly mm -hmm. that people get involved in art. I've yeah. taught in art and design schools a lot of my life and I think creativity is a terribly important part of our lives. So that people have access to it and they're, they're not put off by it, it's mm. not inaccessible. Mm. I think it's incredibly important. So mm. the sort of fundamental principles of Cambridge Open Studios Firstly, the artists, creative people, open their studios to the general public mm -hmm. each year and mm -hmm. are there in person to talk to people about what they do and answer the difficult questions, why do you do this, what's it all about, um, and, and the school kids that come around because they're interested and so they want to find out about it, so all of that is brilliant. But also, the fact that Cambridge Open Studios is non-selective, so mm -hmm. we don't have a sort of snotty committee that's deciding what art is. Art is what, uh, it's about being creative and it's about the general public getting to see that and mm. getting to understand and enjoy it. And at the end of the day, I think the quality out comes out anyway because um, people naturally gravitate to the stuff that they mm. like and they're interested yeah. in, you know. That's right. So I, that's what I like about Open Studio. It's democratic, it's open. And since we got it like that, it's, it's expanded hugely. So. Mm. You know, that's, I think that's great as well because we know that that's something that works. Yes, yes. And, and it's all self-funded, you know, no self -funded. anything like that. Yeah. People need 
they, they need something creative in their lives. Mm. I think it's terribly important. Mm. And in a modern world, which is so dominated by media, mm. and so stuff is delivered to people, to, to, for mm. people to understand that you can create things yeah. yourself. Yes. You know, and it's in not, this day and age. <laughs> in this day and age, it's not a complete mystery, and it's not impossible. It just requires a bit of application, an idea, and some inspiration. Well, thank you very much for that, Roger. It's a, a pleasure, deep, Chris. So thank you, and um, good luck in France as well. Yeah, thank you very much. We're looking forward to that. We will be back, though. <laughs>